It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, Coyote's Creed. Riding the range all day, tangling with mesquite and juniper and sagebrush can make a man look forward to hot grub and a good night's sleep. A copper and gold sunset is already fading in the sky. Hopalong Cassidy and his sidekick, California, have just turned their horses into the corral and are heading for the Bar 20 Ranch House when a horse and rider bear down on them at a fast gallop. Is that one of the ranch hands heading this way, California? He don't look familiar. Holy smoke, he's coming like a tornado with a twist in his tail. Hello there. Where are you headed, youngster? You're Hopalong Cassidy, aren't you, mister? That's right, son. Well, that horse is sure head up. You must have rode a long way. All the way from Buckboard Flats. I'm Ricky Curtis. Oh, Ricky Curtis? Hmm. Oh, you must be Richard Curtis's boy. Well, that's right. I recollect your pa owned that rich mine up in Buckboard Flats. Got killed in an accident a few years back, didn't he? Yes. My half-sister Ellen sent me to find you, Mr. Cassidy. She said if anybody could help us, it would be you. Well, what's the trouble, Ricky? There's something funny going on that we can't figure out. We're getting pretty desperate. Well, suppose you tell me about it. Well, it happened about six weeks ago. The cattle have been stampeded so many times, we've had to put on extra hands at the ranch. Several head of cattle have been poisoned, too. Poisoned? How? The water holes. I see. Go on. Now something has come up about the old mining property of Dad's. The Gold Crescent. Uh... I'd rather my sister gave you the details. Uh, we'll ride back to Buckboard Flats with you, Ricky. Oh, I'm not riding back. Not yet. I'm going on to Elkhorn tonight to see Dad's lawyer. And that is, if, if you'll stake me to a fresh horse. Fair enough. You ride on up to the chuck wagon and get some supper. Fresh horse will be ready for you by the time you are. Oh, I certainly am obliged to you. Uh, your dad helped me out of a pretty bad hole just about the time you were born, son. I'd be a mighty poor sort of man if I missed this chance to repay him. Well, thanks, Mr. Cassidy. Get along, Smokey. Well, California? Yeah, we'll be hitting the trail tomorrow morning right after breakfast. Huh? We'll be hitting the trail tonight. Right after supper. Oh, hey, I'm plumb tuckered out. I was figuring on a good snooze hop here. Let me have a look at you, California. <laughs> yeah, you do need your beauty sleep pretty bad. Well, I'll go ahead to Buckboard Flats and send you a postcard. If you can wake up long enough to read it. Guess I'll go along to help you write it. <laughs> you can't spell worth a hoot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, ain't we a mite off the main road, Hoppy? Just a little detour, California. <laughs> I suppose you wonder where we're going. Carnation, no. Not if it's a secret. It's a side trail. It'll shorten our ride. Oh, uh, uh, oh, sure, sure. <laughs> I note it all the time. Yeah, I bet you did, you old rascal. Look, there's a light flashing over there. I don't see nothing, Hoppy. Over there, about where the Curtis mine should be. Some sort of light. No, just moonlight shining on the tin roof. Well, that's funny. I could have sworn it. Oh, that's a familiar sound. Too darn familiar. That's a coyote. Just a minute, California. Oh, Tommy. What's, uh, what's the matter, Hoppy? Well, that's a coyote, all right. But I've got a hunch it's a human coyote. And it's coming from the Curtis mine. Where's the Curtis ranch? Over there, to the left. Yeah? Hey, Hoppy. There's a fire over there. Well, that's the ranch house, California. It's on fire. Holy smoke! Smoke is right. Let's go. Hoppy and 
California approached the Curtis mine only to hear the imitated wail of a coyote. But they are more alarmed by what they see in the direction of the Curtis Ranch. Angry flames lash at the wooden structure. I thought maybe Ricky was exaggerating about the trouble they had around the ranch. Speaking as a man who's just been shot at, I'd say it would be mighty hard to exaggerate the situation. Of course, the fire could have been an accident. Looks like it's starting to lean to. Yeah, but it'll lead into the body of the house in a minute. Come on, boy, just a little farther now. Copper ain't lighting the looks of the fire, Hoppy. Yeah, I know. That's a mighty good thing about riding this nag of mine. He don't mind nothing. Not even me. We better leave the horses here. Yeah, yeah, guess so. Well, there's no organization. They'll never check it this way. You better take over, Hoppy. It's just a lead to. Where's an axe? Here you are, partner. All right, you fellas. Fill those buckets with sand. Did you say sand, Hoppy? Yes, yeah, sand. Water's too far away. Both sand. Yeah, yeah, he's right. Quiet getting. We gotta work fast here. Look out, she's gonna fall. Stand back, everybody. There she goes. That's right, and you're Ellen Curtis. Yes. Well, let's move over here where we can talk. Oh, that was mighty hot. I have you to thank for saving the house. Well, that's a good thing the fire started in the lean-to off the kitchen. How did it happen? I don't know. There's been trouble for months. Now this. I don't understand it. Then you think it was done on purpose? I don't know how else, but... How can we prove it? All the ranch hands are asleep in the bunkhouse. Nobody heard a sound. Uh, I heard something, but I couldn't get out in time to see who it was. Oh, this is Dad's old foreman, Mr. Luther, Mr. Cassidy. Yes, how do you do, sir? Uh, I tried so hard to keep things going right at the ranch for Miss Ellen's sake, but these awful things keep happening. It's not your fault, Mr. Luther. Well, you hands can take turns standing guard so the fire doesn't break out again. Yes, sir, I'll tell them. Then you'd both better get some sleep. Because starting tomorrow morning, we got a little personal war to wage. And from the looks of things, we have a pretty treacherous enemy. Don't know why we can't be stretched out in our bedrolls like decent folks are at this hour of the night. Stop complaining, California. I want to take a look through the Curtis mine. Won't take but a little while. Yeah, a little while and the whole darn night will be gone. Guess I'll have to learn to sleep with my eyes open like a blasted owl. <laughs> Here we are. Oh, sure is a lonesome place. Yeah, I guess it's deserted all right. We better leave the horses here. Come on. Hey, I ain't going inside that mine. Not scared, are you? No, just careful. I ain't aiming to fall down no shaft. There aren't any shafts and no tunnels. Just a big hole dug 10 or 1,200 feet into the flank of the mountain. You don't say. This was a famous mine until it played out. They called it the glory hole. Coming? Yeah, I'm coming, but I ain't convinced. <laughs> Oh, it's been abandoned a long time. I can understand why. Edge in along the side. Don't bump your head on those timbers. Some of them stick out pretty far. I'm sure glad I led a good, clean life. Stop complaining. Where's your love of adventure? Probably nobody's explored these diggings since the mine closed down. Oh, yeah? Then uh, what's this? Where? What? A nice new carbide lamp off some miner's hat. Well, what do you know about that? Uh, no rust or nothing. Hmm. There's something else interesting. A nugget. Half that. That's some nugget, Hoppy. Huh? Well, we've seen enough. I'll take this nugget along just in case. Let's get out of here. Shoots me two more minutes and I'd have webbed wings like a bat. <laughs> take it easy, California. You'll come out feet first. I'm out. Hey! Hey, it's daybreak. The suns are coming up. Yeah, sure feels good. Hug the ground. Why, they dry gulch and varmint are... Somebody doesn't want us to leave this mine alive. That's the varmint. Up there in the ridge. I see him. Oh, too far away. There he goes, Hoppy. Well, we scared him off anyway. Yeah, him and that pinto chore skedaddle. I wonder why. He sure had the advantage up there on the ledge and plenty of rocks to hide behind. Hey, that lead slinging idiot must have been the human coyote we heard last night. Maybe. When somebody goes to that much trouble to take in the welcome mat, I get curious enough to investigate. 
I get more curious every minute. Oh, what do you make of it, Hoppy? Ah, it's one of two things. Either Alan Curtis has uncovered a new vein and is having the mine work. Or, or else what? Or somebody's stealing ore. This is falling into a pattern, California. A pretty ugly pattern. Let's get the horses and head for Alan's ranch. Ah, this is good coffee, Alan. <laughs> sure is. Just what a couple of night owls need. California. Night uh, owls? Didn't you get any sleep? Well, as a matter of fact, California and I went over to the Curtis Mine to have a look. You went to the mine? How long have you been working that shaft, Ellen? That mine played out years ago, after Father died. You haven't had somebody up there taking out ore on a small scale? I just told you. There's no ore to take out. I don't know what you're trying to say, Mr. Cassidy. That's all right. Forget it, Ellen. I, I guess we were just imagining things. Uh, isn't that right, California? Uh-huh. Imagining what we... Uh... Yeah, sure. Oh, sure, sure, Hoppy. Sure. Is, uh, is Mr. Luther around? No, he isn't. He's gone somewhere. This early? Mr. Cassidy, it uh, seems could, to be... Could I have some more coffee, uh, Miss Allen? Oh, all right. Sounds like a visitor. I'll have a look. Oh, it, it's Steve Holt. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Ellen. I want to have a talk with you. Go on around to the front door. I'll be right there. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Cassidy. I'll have to talk to him. He's been trying to buy the mine. You go right ahead, Ellen. We'll stay here and finish our breakfast. I won't be long. There's uh, more coffee on the stove. Thanks. Doggone it, Hoppy. Why did you tell her we imagined things for her? That miner's hat and that gold nugget ain't imagined. Calm down, California. Did you notice how upset she was when we talked about the ore? Yeah. Well, there's something Ellen Curtis isn't telling us. Let's get over here near the door and see what we can hear. California. Oh, come on. All right. I don't know what more I can say. I've told you several times, Steve, I just can't stand. It's a good price, Ellen. If you'll give me a little more time. All right, but I won't wait much longer. If many more things happen like that fire last night, you're going to need the money. Think that over, Ellen. We better get back to the table, California. Did you hear that, Hoppy? So Mr. Steve Holder's trying to frighten her into selling the mine. Here she comes. I'm sorry I kept you waiting, Mr. Cassidy. Is uh, is everything all right, Ellen? Oh, Steve Holt's an impatient man. Do you know him? Uh, well, the name's familiar, but I can't just... He and Dad were partners when they first made the strike. Oh. Began to pay off, and Steve wanted to sell out. Dad bought his share for $17,000. Hmm. Steve must have kicked himself afterward. That mine produced plenty of gold. Yes, it was a rich mine. But that wasn't the only reason Steve was sorry. You see, he took off his overalls, bought some store clothes, and swore he'd never do another day's work again as long as he lived. Yippee, that's real living. <laughs> In two months, he was broke. He came back to the Curtis mine, this time looking for a job. Went to work for $3 a day. He'd spent the whole $17,000 without leaving Buckboard flat. Mm, it must have been some spree. Well, easy come, easy go. He was an awful sore head about it. Finally went away. Now he's back and wants to buy the mine. Why does he want to buy it if the ore's played out? Why, I don't really know. Sentimental reasons, he says. How much did he offer? $5,000. That's a lot to pay for sentiment. Who can that be? Why, it's Ricky. Ricky? He's been hurt. Oh! Wait a minute, Ricky. I'll get you out of that saddle. Hello, Mr. Cassidy. Take it easy, son. Put your arm around my neck. Easy now, That's Ricky. fine. Lean your weight against me. I'll try it. Huh? He's oh. fainted. Oh. California, take care of his horse. Be careful now. Bring him in here, Mr. Cassidy. Here. Take those pillars away. I want his head low. Is he hurt bad? It looks like somebody's beat him up. He'll be all right, though. He's opening his eyes. Oh, poor Ricky. This is terrible. Hello, Ricky. Feel pretty rough? Oh, my head hurts. What happened? I was ambushed. Ambushed? On the way back from Elkhorn. How many of them were there? I, I don't know. Three or four. Oh. The pistol whipped me, Mr. Cassidy. Did you recognize any of them? No. They, they ambushed me from behind. A tin fork. I'm sure Ricky has no idea who it could be. Was one of them riding a pinto? Uh, 
A pinto? Oh. Yes, I think so. Oh, I don't know. Uh, you better get some sleep now, Ricky. We'll talk about this later. Hoppy! Yeah? Hoppy! Uh, here's a note I found pinned to Ricky's saddle blank. Let me see that. Ah, oh, it's printed. Them's big letters, ain't they, Hoppy? <laughs> yeah, and they're big words, too. Listen to this. Ricky Curtis wasn't worth killing, but a certain cowpoke named Cassidy is going to catch a belly full of lead if he don't clear out a buckboard flats by sundown. <laughs> evening has turned the desert as cold and gray as a lead bullet. Hop along in California trying to help Ellen Curtis solve the problems of violent happenings on her ranch. Evidently, they aren't paying much attention to that warning to get out of town, for here they are, still in Buckboard Flats. Buckboard Flats, hotel and bar. Well, this is it, California. I'm as thirsty as a camel that's been eating dried apples. <laughs> Here's the object of our search at the end of the bar. Oh, gone. I just thought we was coming in for the fun of it. Wait here for me. You're uh, Steve Holt? That's right. But you sure got the advantage, stranger. My name's Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. What's on your mind? Whenever I can't figure out a play, I like to know who's dealing the cards. I got a few questions to put to you. Sorry? I don't know the answers. You know the answer to this one? I want to know why you're so anxious to buy out the Curtis mine. I reckon that's none of your business, Mr. Cassidy. I've made it my business. Why, you nosy Paul kind of I... Hello. You wait. Sorry, mister. When I see a man go for his gun, it's just reflex to knock it out of his hand. Grease lightning, that's what it was. Pick up his gun, California. Empty it. Let me have it. Hmm. Bad gun. A little fancy, maybe. Well, hold here you are. Keep it sheathed if you don't want to lose a hand. You won the first round, Cassidy. But there'll be another time. And another round. You're pretty sure of yourself. I got an advantage over you, Cassidy. I know the facts. All the facts. <laughs> Well, that's what California and I found in the mine. So you see, Sheriff, we'll need a posse to round up those gold rustlers. Yeah, there's been a lot happening, all right. But the way you tell it, there ain't enough evidence to convict anybody. Somebody's guilty as a coyote in a chicken coop. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But who? Steve Holt wants to buy the mine. That ain't again the law. What about Ricky? Says he don't even know who beat him up. And there's Ellen Curtis. She had a mysterious fire on her ranch. I can't send no posse out till you catch somebody dead to right. You mean he has to have a gold nugget in one pocket and a deed to the mine in the other? That's just about it. You catch him red-handed and I'll sure come out and pick him up. That's mighty decent of you, Sheriff. Good night. Good night, Sheriff. Good night, Sheriff. Whee! Fresh air. <laughs> nice atmosphere in there, California. To put it delicate, I didn't like the smell. Well, looks like we'll have to get our own posse together. Looks that way, Hoppy. Can you meet me in about an hour at the Curtis mine? You mean uh, we're the posse? Right. Mm -hmm. All right, Hoppy. We're going to have to have a showdown with those high graders tonight. I know it. I figured they work in the graveyard shift. Midnight. Uh, there about. Now, that coyote we heard last night was their lookout. Oh, good. You're right, Hoppy. But tonight, you're going to be the coyote. Huh? Sure. Oh, no. Hoppy. All you needed to do a little uh, practice. Uh, now? Right now. Uh, I do a ball and calf better. This has to be a coyote. Well, <clears throat> here goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can do better than that. Yeah, I think you can. I'll try it again, Hoppy. <clears throat> oh, take it easy, Tom. Oh, 
Well, even Popper believed that one. <laughs> it was better, huh? <laughs> and I got a bottle of sarsaparilla in my saddlebag. I'll oil up tonight before I let go. Yeah. You know that ledge above the mouth of the mine? Where that varmint shot at us? Yeah, you hide out up there. I get you, Hoppy. You can take care of the lookout. Take care of the lookout? Yeah, hold that coyote, Hal, till they're in the mine, working. Then start shooting. I want enough shots to make them think there's a posse up there. Uh, but, but, but uh, where, where'll you be, Hoppy? I got my position all staked out. Now, remember, in an hour, everything depends on you and your coyotes, Hal. <laughs> I'm over here. What do you want? Uh, this is my last night working this mine. I'm plumb easy. Yeah, me too. Shoot yourself, boys. It's awful easy money. Uh, I ain't hankering for no run-in with Hopalong Cassidy. Hey, look out, posted. If anybody rides up, he'll signal. There's plenty of time to get out of here. Uh, just the same, I'm uneasy. Hey, listen. That's the signal now. Somebody's coming. Clear all the lights. Smile out easy and quiet. Stay out of sight. There's a posse out there. What's the matter with that lookout? We're trapped in here. We're trapped. We're... Kill all the lights. We're done for. We're seized. They've got us covered. What's that? Break it down. Dynamite. Oh, it's an earthquake. Steady, boys. Get out of the oven and drop your gun. Well, that's up along chest. Well, in blazes are you, Cassidy? It's the ore cars. They're loose. Cassidy did it. He's writing the cars out. You're covered. Get out of the fire. We're going. Oh, don't shoot. Don't shoot. Keep your hands up and march. Oh, I know we get the help. Keep walking and don't try anything. You're not going to take me that easy. I mean... oh, my hand. My hand. Draw a gun, will you, Steve Holt? Mm. Yes, there, didn't he? Yeah, California. Right here, hubby. Oh, yeah. ah, my glad to see you. Yeah, it's good to be out. I've been waiting on that hole for an hour. Yeah. Take their guns. And now rope and tie this fellow. We'll deliver him to the sheriff. All right. I'll take care of the rest of them. Yeah, I told you. Well, you let's start moving. Here, wait, wait a minute, hubby. We get another prisoner. The lookout. Where is he? Tied up right over here. Over here. There. Stay quiet, men. I got this gun ready. Why? Well, I'll be doggone hoppy. I had him tied here so the that... the ropes cut. Yeah, and here's fresh hoof prints in the sand. So in the confusion, someone helped the lookout get away. Yeah. And when you hear who the lookout is, you ain't gonna like it, hoppy. Ellen, I can't bring you very good news, I'm afraid. Steve Holt and four men were high-grading ore from the Curtis mine. Yes. But they weren't alone in it. What do you mean? The lookout, Miss Ellen. It wasn't so dark that I couldn't see who it was. There's no need to pretend any longer, Ellen. We may as well see Ricky now. No, Mr. Cassidy. You've stopped Steve Holt. Can't you leave things alone? It's, it's no use, Miss Ellen. Mr. Luther, I didn't hear you come. A clean sweep is the only way. You're all trying to trick me into saying something. I've been trying to protect Ricky, too. I even sneaked up and cut him loose tonight. Oh. But it's all a futile effort. No. No. Now, I figured that Ricky became involved with Steve Holt in this dirty mess before he realized how serious it was. But why in the world did he go to you, Mr. Cassidy? Well, I guess he was scared and wanted to stop it, but he didn't know how. Sometimes youngsters do foolish things. And Ricky was always being greedy. I guess deep in my heart I suspected my brother. But I didn't know what to do. Face the truth, Alan, and go on from there. Nothing's ever so bad it can't be righted if you stand up to it square. Ricky can be straightened out, and after that, he'll have a big job running the Curtis mine. <laughs> Let's get out of here, Hoppy. A crying woman just makes jelly out of my side. Yeah. <laughs> Goodbye, Ellen. Mr. Luther. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Cassidy. Sure be good to see the bar 20 again, eh, Hoppy? <laughs> <laughs> I won't have to wait that long. Ah, feels good to be straddle topper again after riding an ore car through a tunnel. <laughs> That's no job for a cowpuncher. Uh, and I didn't like being a coyote neither. I, I do a ball and calf much better. <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy and all the gang up Bar 20 Way. 
But be sure and be back with us when Hoppy in California will again be riding out as usual into dangerous action and adventure. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Coyote's Creed was written by Mel Gardner. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Thank <laughs> you.